Hello everyone. This is actually a special episode of Ren Fair Exposed. As I had been working on an episode of about the dark side of Ren Fair, I started getting emails and I started getting comments and I started getting DMs from people at Work Fair who had started to listen and watch the show and had their own stories. Um, a few of the stories I'm going to highlight in special sections like this, and I feel like their to stories should just be told without my commentary and without my opinion. I mean, I just want to let their voices be heard. Um, and so the way I'm doing this is I'm going to have uh, an automated voice read the emails or the uh, messages that were sent to me. This email um, was sent to me and I just felt like it was a story that I've heard from many people. So I thought it would be a great first one to open that door. Um, I personally have had experiences uh, like this at FAIR um, in management, having to deal with them and as well personally so it is definitely a hard topic um and so i just want to let everyone know this episode does cover sa and it could be a heavy trigger warning for many fair people so just be aware um i had asked this person to make sure that um, we didn't use any fair names um, and names of people because I didn't want to get into that game. So they left it as pointless. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess we left this story as um, pointing the finger list as possible. Um, yeah. But I will say that these are definitely stories that I've heard. And for victims out there and for people who have experienced this, I'm completely sorry. And I hope things will get better. So without further ado, here is Dark Side Affair Part 1, um, and we'll just focus on one story in these segments. Dear and Fair Exposed Podcast, Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my experience at the local Renaissance Fair. I hope that my story can shed light on the darker side of these events and help others be aware of the potential dangers. I first want to say that not all fairs are like the one I am going to talk about, but this fair is the biggest fair in my area. 
I have struggled to share this mainly from the fact that I am still recovering from the trauma not only from my attacker, but also from the women who run the fair that I thought would be there for me but instead gaslit me in front of all the fellow participants. I had always wanted to participate in the Renaissance Fair. My family and my friends have always taken the drive from the Bay to the South Bay to be surrounded by the sound and smells of the Ren Fair. My family always dressed up and went multiple weekends to see the shows, try the food, and take pictures. I always felt so beautiful in my garb. When I turned 20, I finally decided that it was time to participate. I had a job that allowed me to have weekends off and could make the equipment. I had seen posts in Facebook groups announcing auditions and participant signups. I will say I didn't realize the hours spent preparing, building, and rehearsing for the fair to open. It was about three weeks before opening day and about $400 later in costuming, which had to be approved by a lady who obviously hates other women. While all this was a bit of a turn-off, I did want to do this for myself and my friends. I found a guild which I won't mention because they were some good people or I felt like they were. I know they still work there so I don't know how I feel. After driving home every day after pre-fair, we decided that we would camp for opening weekend, mainly because everyone talked about the after hours like they were a must. This part of the experience is where my story becomes triggering. From the opening of the gate to the closing, my first day was magical. I just never thought it would be the last time I could visit a place I adored as a child. My friends and I began to build our tent in Pea Camp, which is a wide field with trailers, tents, and about 1,000 people without showers. The areas were pretty well defined and they had places where the fair royalty would sleep or where guilds were. My friends and I started to walk around and meet people. It was surprising how fast we were offered booze and other substances. It is almost as if the gates closing lifted all laws and the fair became a crazy party with no rules. My friends and I went to a place they called the living room and that's where I met a man. The rest of the night I would bump into him wherever we went, whether it was in the food court or where they were dancing. He was charming and fun, but not my type. The night got crazier and we ended up out in the parking lot at an after-hours party with a bunch of trucks with their headlights on and radios blaring. It is here where I finally felt comfortable enough to have a drink, and this was the worst mistake I have made in my entire life. After one drink, I was more intoxicated than I had ever been before. My friends had met some guys and were not ready to call it a night, but I was in no condition to walk to my tent by myself. A small group, including the guy who had been insistent on being a gentleman and making sure I found my tent. Without going into much detail, the next hours were the most horrific of my life. Whatever they had put in my drink had now made the world spin, and all I can remember is being limp and held up by him. The rest of my memories were flashes of consciousness. I woke up the next morning in his tent. I was confused and my body had marks from what was a clear violation of my personal space. The signs were clear. The guy who was outside his tent with his buddy smiled at me acting as if I had consented to this violation. His friends around him were all laughing and drinking, getting ready for the day. I left quickly and found my tent and friends. I broke down and my friends convinced me I needed to report what happened to management. I did, and I went through an embarrassing questioning of my character by the women who ran the entertainment department. They made me feel as if it was all my fault and clearly were protecting the man they knew. I left there not feeling safe, but rather feeling shame and like I was the one at fault. My pass was taken away for underage drinking, which is funny as the man who builds the lady site is giving booze to every girl over the age of 18. But I didn't feel safe anyway, so I didn't want to argue. 
It wasn't until I was informed by other participants that the entertainment director and the fair owner, both women, stood in front of all the actors and crew at a meeting and told them that they would not protect women who drank too much and had regrets that they had bigger issues to deal with. Needless to say, I will never go to that fair again and from what I have heard, I am not the only one who has had this experience. It was years later that I found out how many sexual assault offenders were registered and were working the fair unchecked and embraced by the women in charge. Thank you again for letting me share my story with anonymity and for highlighting not only the good but also the seedy side of the fair.